The Everdue Gita is considered the most dangerous book in the world for many reasons. Even to your meditation practice, because this book explains that meditation itself is shameful. Why is meditation shameful? Let's find out. The Avaduta Gita is one of those texts that one comes across as they've gone further and further down the path of spirituality. And it's one that many people don't come across. It's, it's similar to the Ashtavaka Gita. And this is for many reasons, right? Because the Avaduta Gita is considered a Nididhyasana text. Now, Nididhyasana is a word for non-dual meditation on the four Mahavakyas within Vedanta. Now, we won't go into the four Mahavakyas, but the premise is that Atman, your ultimate nature, is Brahman already. You are already that, right? Behind me, Tattvamasi is one of the Mahavakyas. You are that. And so a Nididhyasana is a meditation on those four Mahavakyas. It's called a non-dual meditation. And so some of those texts are the Ashtavaka Gita, which I've done plenty of, and also today the Avaduta Gita, which I've done a few on in the past. And the Avaduta Gita is probably one of my favorite texts of all time. And in the text, it doesn't beat around the bush, right? There's no foreplay. You go straight into it. You go straight into it. Each verse is a contemplation and a meditation in and of themselves. And so today we've got an interesting verse, a really interesting verse on why meditation itself is a shameful act. Now, why is meditation a shameful act? Well, let's first have a look at what Lord Dattatreya has to say in the Avaduta Gita. Truly, everything in this universe is filled through and through by your Atman alone. Thus, there is no meditator or meditation in your mind. How is it that you are meditating without any sense of shame? Now, first of all, as I mentioned, these Nididhyasana texts are basically a meditation on that the Atman is already Brahman. I mean, you are that already. And so Dattatreya, all he's saying here is that through and through, Atman alone exists. That's all that exists. And you believe you are this person, this jiva, right? This persona system, this ego that you have developed due to the course of the socialization process. And you are attached to this, right? This is why we become fearful at death because we're so associated with this sense of self that we need to actually let go of. Upon death, we're actually forced to let go of it, even though we go kicking and screaming a lot of the time. But you are fundamentally and always actually the Atman, is Dr. Trey's point in this verse. And so anything we do that contradicts that or, or in some sense is paradoxical to that is really silly and in his words actually shameful right it's shameful that we already don't know that we are that now dr trey goes into this and he actually attacks meditation itself the practice of meditation and that may seem strange right but it's not that dr trey is against meditation per se He's not saying meditation is useless because that is not true, right? Meditation helps us all. And even if you look at the Dattatreya tradition, which is built on the Avaduta Gita, obviously meditation is a big part of that as well. But in these Nididhyasana texts, particularly the Avaduta Gita, Dattatreya is trying to always bring you back that you are that. You are that. And it's a meditation in and of itself because you're constantly moving away from your jiva and you're abiding in the Atman. And so he's not saying that it's useless, right? But he's making a point. And he's speaking from his level of understanding, right? He is identified with the ultimate Brahman. So from his place, he thinks it's silly that we're all sitting there quietly closing our eyes or doing asanas or practicing Tai Chi Chuan or whatever because he is a knower of Brahman. So his instruction is from the level of realization. That's why these Nididhyasana texts are so important because the instructions are from that level. That's why to some of us who are just beginning on the path, it, it can actually just crack our mind or sometimes we can't understand it. It's either or, right? But even for those who have gone further, it can be a little bit overwhelming because it's from the level of realization. And so 
Delta Trader is speaking in this verse or in every verse from that level of realization. That's why he believes meditation is a shameful act because it's almost like you forgot you are the Atman. You are in a process of trying to remember that you are the Atman. But everything is the Atman. The Atman alone exists. It is Brahman. And since you are naturally Atman, you are naturally free. You are already liberated. It's just the belief that you suffer and that you are bound is the problem because you've bought into the jiva. The jiva is the one who suffers. The jiva is the one who is bound and in some sense who needs to be liberated. But your ultimate nature is already liberation itself. You are already free. So meditation itself, according to Dr. Treya, is a shameful act because you forgot you're already free, right? You're meditating to free yourself, to be liberated, but you're already that. Your nature is one with the divine. And that may be hard for a lot of us to comprehend, but that is what Dr. Treya is pointing to. That's what the Avaduta Gita is pointing to, even the Ashtavaraka Gita, the Mandukya Upanishad, all of the great Nidhyasana texts are saying, hold up, it's all well and good that you are cultivating and developing yourself, but do you really know who you truly are? Are you ready for the ultimate knowledge? Are you ready for this, right? Are you ready for the four Mahavakyas? Are you ready for the understanding that Atman is already Brahman? You are already free and liberated as you are right now. Can we all feel that? Everyone listening and watching right now, can we all feel that? Can you feel that liberation at the core of your being? Maybe some will, maybe some won't, because maybe some have still a gravitational pull towards their jiva and others have dissolved that relationship and are more abiding in the Atman. And so that's Dr. Trey's point here. It's not that meditation is a bad act in and of itself. It's not shameful in and of itself. It can help us. It can till the soil so that eventually we can understand these great texts. That's the point. But it's from that level of realization, even for yourself, when you do become liberated, for all of us, when we all become liberated, that we can look back on all of that spiritual practice we've done and all of those things we've done in a sense that we didn't actually need any of that. But in some sense, it's necessary. And that's the paradox of life, right? That can be the paradox of life, that we're doing all of this spiritual practice in a sense of that we're trying to attain something, but we already have the attainment, right? We have already attained it, but we've just forgot. So in some sense, meditation acts as a sort of spiritual solvent so that we can dissolve this misunderstanding away and this attraction to the jiva so that we can come back into our true nature, which is Atman, which is identical with Brahman. Shanti, shanti, shanti. 